Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Good. So, you know, I am, uh, I am hoping just to share with you a few perspectives from, um, from the leader of public hospital system uh, around how uh, our visits to Cuba, uh, both my, my own personal visits, um, but more importantly, frankly, the visits of a lot of caregivers um, and the folks you see to my right, how that's really impacted us um, and changed uh, quite a bit of our perspective. I, I would tell you just as full disclosure, um, so I was initially um, a naysayer. I was a non-believer. Um, I heard these stories of people going to Cuba and, and frankly, I was puzzled as to why are they going to Cuba? Like, what are they learning? And I sent a few of our docs, and our docs told me they were going, and you know, I supported it, but I sort of thought, I'm not sure why we're doing this. Um, and every time they would come back, I would go and listen to the debrief. And the first time I listened, I was blown away by what they were telling me. I sort of thought, surely that can't be true. And I went again to the next visit, and heard the report, and after that I was sold and saying, okay, I'm going on the next trip to Cuba because I've got to see this for, uh, for myself. So, so just really quickly to sort of talk about um, who we are. So I'm the CEO of Alameda County Medical Center, and we're the state center organization for Alameda County, and so we've got three hospitals, and I won't read all this stuff to you, but it just kind of gives you a quick sense of who we are. We've got not, not quite 500 beds across our three hospitals, and lots of docs. Um, we're really known for doing, doing um, the thing that's not emphasized in Cuba, which is doing interventional stuff, ER, trauma, high-end stuff. You know, we're, we're known for <coughs> intervening after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, and Cuba is really good at intervening well before the fact. And so um, this is a, a journey that, that uh, we're on and trying to, to re reorient how we, how we do what we do. Cuba's approach can absolutely, absolutely and fundamentally change how um, the U.S. approaches healthcare. Um, unequivocally um, and hopefully can help us locally uh, improve access um, because we're not sort of thinking about our healthcare system the way that we traditionally do which is quite a big building a really big building particularly in, in the safety net you know you do really big buildings oftentimes not in people's communities and you wonder why you have access problems um, and so this sort of notion of consultarios in a community um, where where healthcare is not a destination, it is part of the community, it's something that's so foreign to us, but it's so common in Cuba, and it seems like a very simple thing, uh, but that, in my mind, is one of the things that makes it uh, so, so, uh, so important. Uh, one of the other reasons why it was important to travel, as I mentioned, is that um, teaching is in the DNA of our healthcare system, and so we educate lots of folks, and so the opportunity to partner with Bay Area um, um, students who are trying to pursue medicine um, um, for all the right reasons, um, pr pr pursuing medicine because they really want to impact their community and they want to do that in a very meaningful way is something that's really, um, really powerful. Um, and so we'll just share a few lessons that, that, that we've learned um, and that we're trying to implement. Um, you know, population health is, is all the rage now with lots of organizations that are trying to focus on medical homes and, and longitudinal care management and chronic disease management. And so we are, are doing the same thing. We are actually, we are actually taking the, 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 the principles of the dispensarization uh, concept and trying to do it ourselves. We actually are, are now um, having our, all of our medical home uh, managers um, put patients into four tiers and are trying to focus on, you know, which tier are they in and then how do we assign resources based upon stratification. And so it's something that we, we brought back very specifically from Cuba. And frankly, during our summer interns, which I'll mention in a second, um, we've really um, tried to harvest knowledge from the ELOM students to help us in, in developing uh, this, um, this approach. And so clearly in a, situa in a, in a system like ours where we have um, lots of patients and we we at times lament you know um, inadequate resources um, I, I show a lot of our teams um, photos of Cuba and I say to them so the, the, the day that you want to complain about what you don't have um, take a look at what these folks are doing with a tenth of the resources you have 
and maybe five times the production that we do. And so, and so that always seems to put things in, in, uh, in context. I um, also wanted to share uh, a few more things that we're attempting to do to integrate uh, the Cuban principles into our system. And uh, as Kimmy mentioned, and I think frankly one of our weaknesses has been that we have a very confident public health system. Um, we had a very robust FQHC network. We had a very hardworking um, safety net healthcare system, but at times we were doing all those things in separate universes and not understanding the, the need for integration and, and bringing those circles together. Um, and so we're spending quite a bit of time starting with relying on the data from the public health system to help us drive outcomes, help us drive how do we pair our resources where the community needs it. And I think, frankly, that has been a significant uh, benefit uh, to us. Um, um, I, I want to just uh, share a couple comments before I close on supporting the, the summer program. We've had a number of students through our, our system over the last four summers, and we'll tell you that, that um, the knowledge that those young folks impart on our senior physicians has been really remarkable. Um, um, our docs, I think, enjoy it more than the students do um, because it's a breath of fresh air. It's a change in perspective. Um, it's sort of taking the pyramid and flipping it on its point um, to help us uh, improve um, how, we, how we teach. And I'll tell you that when I was there, um, I was there in 2010, we were in Cuba the Sunday when uh, President Obama signed uh, the Affordable Care Act. And we were sort of cheering, you know, in a bar, <laughs> in a bar, and um, and people sort of looked at us as we told them why we were celebrating, and they looked at us like we were from Mars. <laughs> you mean you guys don't have universal health care? <laughs> you mean you, your country doesn't believe that health care is a right? You mean, and so, and so I just tell you that that, that I do all of these things that we've been doing in supporting the summer program. Uh, and supporting Elon and supporting Medic, frankly, because um, if we're going to get a country that is going to really um, thrive, that will provide for its residents um, the kind of life that you need, people must be healthy. Um, and so what we've learned from Elon, what we've learned from Medic, what we've learned from the students, what we've learned from the Cuban system effectively is they're doing a much better job of ensuring that every resident has access to high quality health care. Um, they're doing it at a cost that's less than ours, uh, and they're doing it with outcomes that mirror mirror ours. I'll, I'll sort of close on this, show you this slide, a quote from, from one of our um, students. Um, and she sort of talks about primary care being the intersection of individual's health and the healthy functioning of society. And I love this. I, I wish we could send this to Washington um, when they're debating you know, whether, whether health care is important to this country or not. Um, it's the intersection between an individual's health and healthy functioning of society. And I think when our society decides that this intersection really makes sense, um, we'll be able to do as much as we should be able to do um, for every member of this community. So thank you.